to collectively bring that all together because what we can see as they come up we probably won't have time to read them all but like yeah. out loud but it will be lovely just to to see that yes so we have some ladies saying oh good i'm glad that you can't see me because i just got out of the shower <laughs> <laughs> we're just coming as we are <laughs> today absolutely i'm coming as i am today i'll tell you what mm -hmm. two kids home from school cabin fever we are we're coming as we are okay so <laughs> some really beautiful intentions coming through if you're if you're new to the group we just invited everybody to share some intentions oh my gosh peace and compassion for myself and the world community healing earth healing connection to beautiful spirits peace and centering oh beautiful support and grounding hmm. oh hi hey, sally love hi. beautiful sally and to de-stress in the middle of a work day Oh, that's perfect. Monica, Judy, welcome. Health and well being. Emma, welcome. Sister, hi. Emma. Discernment, we love you too. Oh, expanding circle. Lucy, we have Lucy here. Hi, Lucy, welcome. Mm. Oh, you're you welcome, Nikki. Hold. It's an honor to hold space for you and for this group. Hello, Shanti. Hello, Farron. Just all the beloveds. Oh. Karen, Kristen, thank you all for being here. It's such an mm -hmm. honor to be with you at this time. Mm -hmm. Jean Marie, Christina. Hi, Christina. Welcome. Doreen. Oh, hi, Jean Marie. Oh, beautiful. Kristen, hi. Feel fear, not love. Feel, feel, feel love not fear this beautiful Kristen. hi thank karen you. my intention is for peace and feeling grounded and for the healing of all people and pachamama mm, and support we have equinox honoring and celebration having mm -hmm. space held love for self and others lovely to see you cindy hi cindy welcome mm -hmm. marie sitting in her garden with us that's gorgeous oh love it mm. and you know everybody's joining from all over the world so mm. i know that we have some women on here from india we have women from all over europe united states yeah so we really are a global circle right now we are. oh beautiful well thank you everybody for being here we're going to go ahead and and get started and dive in and i just want to welcome and 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 thank you for being here. Thank you for spending this time with us. And I want to turn it over to Amanda to to start us out to create some sacred space and intention together. Thank you, dear sister, and welcome, sisters. Like, thank you for you know, for you know, because it's very easy to be like, this is what's going on, and be on that that wheel of whatever energy, and said, say, no, you know what, I'm going to do the self-care that I need and I'm going to stop and even if this is a reset for you or it's a reminder or just and you know we're recording this because the meditation and the prayers and everything we're going to do together you'll have that to listen to so we'll send it out to everybody after so I'd love to start us all off with a, a lovely grounding centering meditation and first of all maybe just start with a chant um and so I'm going to invite everybody to just really drop into this present moment now just to really and I'm, I'm really going to invite you to invite all parts of you, every single aspect of yourself to be here with us now you know not like oh we have to come into meditation where our, we let our thoughts go from the cloud no, let's invite every single thought every single part of ourselves and you know so many of us play so many roles, whether it's as a teacher or a healer or a mother or a sister or a daughter or, you know, all the different roles are playing. So just call in every single part of who you are back into this moment. And every, every beautiful part of yourself, even every stressed out part of yourself and every thought. And, you know, this is a really safe circle here for you to allow whatever emotions come up you know and fears whatever whatever your deepest fear is in this moment to allow yourself to actually feel into it because when we know when we really resist you know an emotion or fear it, like it just persists so when sometimes I say this is my worst fear about what's happening right now 
it kind of like takes the charge out of it and the power out of it and it allows you to take your power back. So I'm going to invite everyone to take a beautiful, big, deep inhale. And exhale. And with a big sigh, just let it all go. So we're going to do three big, deep inhales now together. And as we inhale, we're going to draw our breath up from Pachamama, from, from Gaia, from Eru, from the depths of the earth. Let's take a big, deep inhale. Inhaling our breath up, up, up to the crown of our head and then just holding, holding your breath. And with a big exhale, ah, let it all go. And just inviting to be here physically, yes. Emotionally, mentally. And no matter what is going on in your home, outside of your home, just allow yourself this time to really center and ground. And one of the best ways to bring yourself into the present moment for a soul's breath. So let's take another big, deep inhale. Draw your breath up, 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 all the way to the crown of your head and just holding your breath, holding, holding, and together. Ah, just letting go, letting your shoulders relax, relaxing your jaw, and just letting yourself sink into the chair, the ground, wherever you're sitting or laying in this moment. And just allowing yourself to be. And I'd love to start off with a, a chant. And it's just a very simple Please let me heal in a peace from my center, from my center of me. So please let me feel inner peace. And we're just going to do this eight times together. So taking a deep inhale. Please let me feel in a peace. From my center, from my center of me. Please let me feel in a peace. From my center, from my center of me. Please let me feel in a peace. From my center, from my center of me. Please let me feel in a peace. From my center, from my center of me. Please let me feel in a peace. From my center, from my center of me. Please let me feel in a peace. From my center, from my center of me. One more time together. Please let me feel in a peace. From my center, from my center of me. So I'm going to invite you to send that grounding cord out the base of your spine, down out through the soles of your feet, and send that cord down through the layers of wherever you are, through the foundation of your home. And allow that cord to go deep down through the layers of soil and rock and sand, whatever it needs to pass through, to go to the very heart of the earth, of, of Eru, of Mama Pacha Gaia. Deep, deep down. And the second that you get to the heart of the earth, there is this deep sense of, I am home. I am rooted. I know where I belong. And no matter what is going on in the world, I will keep this connection and stay grounded and centered. So feel your connection to the elements. Feel your connection to the earth that really does offer that strength and that deep sense of grounding. 
the rocks and the crystals that, that hold this ancient wisdom. Feeling your connection with the trees, the ancient trees that have their roots that go deep down into the earth. And as we are moving into the spring equinox right now, the root stays grounded and rooted and knows the importance of this. And even in these times, still reaches up towards the light, still starts to allow the blossoms to come through. Feeling the connection to the sun, that light, that light that is always there, even at times of darkness. Feeling your connection with the waters, the sacred waters throughout the world, the sea and oceans, the rain, the wells, the springs, the rivers, the lakes, and feeling that sacred connection of the water that is within you, that is within the waters. And the water has the ability to cleanse and renew and rejuvenate and is always reminding us to allow ourselves to be in that flow. Feeling your connection with all the elements of air, of wind. So feeling your connection with nature that is always guiding us, which is always inviting us to heal and to know that you have this infinite support below you, above you, all around you. So I invite you now to call this grounding, centering energy of the earth, like this golden light up from the earth and feel it traveling all the way up from the base, the heart of the earth, and feel it entering in through the soles of your feet. Feel it entering in through the base of your spine and like this golden liquid traveling up through every single cell in your body. Feel it traveling up through your spine, feeding your nervous system, your immune system, out around your energetic body cleansing and healing and supporting you. Feel this energy traveling down through your arms and moving up past all your chakras from your base chakra and knowing that you do have all that you need and that all will be okay. The abundance will be looked after. It's just the universe is communicating things with us right now. And this is a pivotal time for us to listen, to listen, to slow down, to go inwards, to connect with the earth, with our higher selves, with each other. As it moves up through the sacral, really connecting at this time with your creativity. There's space for that. It's your own sensuality, your own inner goddess, priestess, moving up to your solar plexus, that area, that emotional center, and just really giving permission for yourself to feel whatever you need to feel, whatever needs to come up, and having the courage to do exactly that. Moving up to your heart and feel that golden liquid just allowing you to really fall even more deeply in love with yourself. And, at, you know, it's easy to do that when times and things are good and flowing. And it's when times that we need it the most to really dive deep into it is when, at a time now when things are a little unsure, a little chaotic, this is when you really go deeper, you find that reservoir within you because it is within all of us of strength, resilience, peace, love, light, 
and knowing that you belong. Knowing and trusting, moving up to your throat. Or maybe you're being asked to, to rise up and to speak your truth in ways that you haven't before. To really step into the most authentic, beautiful version of yourself. Moving up to your third eye, that beautiful golden liquid where you, you really see what you need to see. You see the unseen and that your intuition just gets to expand. And moving all the way up to the crown of your head and just feeling that connection with your higher self, a higher level of consciousness. So as we open sacred space together, we call upon our guides. And if you feel called to call upon your ancestors at this time, those that have walked the path before you, those that are calling out to you to heal lineage from the past, to create a clearer future. So surrounding us all in this beautiful white light, this beautiful white light, we've all chosen to consciously be here together now. And then this soft emerald green light of, of pure peace. So I'm going to invite everyone to just float your hands up to your heart center and to really connect in. Because these are the, this is the only connection that you truly need, feeling that connection with the earth, with your heart, your higher self, and your sisters. Of course, your beloveds in your life, of course. But when you come from this place, you can handle whatever comes, whatever comes your way. So taking a deep inhale and exhale. Reading all of your beautiful intentions. I invite you now to repeat your own intentions for what you would like to experience at this time. Because what we don't need is more fear. We want to be honest about our fears, but we want to be able to express them so they have no more power. And then we want to be clear on what our intention is. What is it we're supposed to learn in this moment? What is it we're supposed to hear? How are we supposed to move forward from here? So how can you make space to ask yourself, to ask spirit these questions? So taking another deep inhale and exhale. Now, whenever you're ready, I'm going to invite you, beloveds, to open your eyes. And over to the beautiful Laura. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, love. Wow. That was so beautiful. <sighs> well, I want to acknowledge that there are people on this call from all over the world, from many different locations, going through many different phases of what we're experiencing in the world, right? Some of you are in Europe, some of you are in Canada, some of you are in New York City, some of you are here in California. We just have the full spectrum all over the world. And that you're, we're all dealing with different levels of what's happening in the world, but we're all very likely dealing with it, right, at some level. And, you know, once a century, uh, maybe even sometimes less, the world is given this very unique powerful and potent opportunity to have the choice to unite and come together or to be divisive. And we're seeing that now, right? We're seeing that we actually have that choice to come together in this time and to lead from love or to, as Amanda spoke to in this in her opening prayer, and that so many of you shared in your intentions, wanting to lead from love and not from fear. 
And fear is what divides us. Fear is what creates a sense of us versus them. It's whose fault. These people aren't doing it right. Um, there's not enough. Fear is that voice. And so on the spring equinox today, because that is what today is, today is the day where the seasons are changing into this season of rebirth, which is, it feels maybe a little bit different than the energy of what we're in right now. I mentioned that in the, in the email that went out, that it feels like, wait a second, we're actually being asked to go inward more, like the winter solstice right now. We're being asked to go more inward, spend a more time perhaps in hibernation and within the four walls of our home, depending on what the restrictions are, where you live, right? For some people, you're on lockdown and you can barely even leave your house. And for some people, you're still able to go out in nature and still be out in your community. It just depends on where you are. But collectively, we're being asked to go more within. And we are in now in the cycle of the year in the northern hemisphere, right? Some of you may be in the southern hemisphere, but the northern hemisphere in the season of spring is when life starts to come alive again. And uh, the symbology of, of the spring equinox is a season of hope where life comes back where the sprouts are starting, where the seeds that we planted are starting to put their shoots out and turn into flowers and turn into the, the beautiful fruits and vegetables that we plan to harvest as it, as it becomes more in the spring and the summer. And so even though we're being asked to go a little bit more inward in this time, I want, to, um, I want us to draw upon that hope that the spring equinox brings us. And that, that promise of rebirth, that is what the spring equinox represents. And that th though we are being asked to go within to this time right now and be more inward, to look more at ourselves as Amanda spoke to, this incredible opportunity that we have to look at ourselves, to look at our systems, to look at the world, to look at our communication, our relationships, like it's all being highlighted. There's an opportunity where it's all being highlighted right now. And what a beautiful opportunity that is. And I also want to acknowledge that for many people on the planet right now, there is a lot of struggle and there is a lot of suffering and there is a lot of fear and there's a lot of concern about how am I going to make it? What about my job? How am I going to pay rent? Right? All of these things that come up in a situation like this as well. And so if we can root into that energy of the spring equinox, which is the energy of hope, it is the energy of the promise of new life. And even in the times where we feel like this winter has just gone on long enough to remember that essence too, that the winter will not be forever, that the spring equinox, equinox brings us the energy of hope and trust and faith in this divine order. And also, you know, one of the things we're gonna talk about that Amanda's gonna go into and we're gonna offer is some practices for how to actually get through this and stay healthy in body, mind, and spirit. And one of those practices is really acknowledging what we're feeling. And so I invited you to bring a pen and a paper um, if you wanted to. This is not something you have to write down, but if you'd like to, you can. Otherwise, you can just let it be a mental exercise and, a, and even a meditation or a visual, visualization. And as we're in this time of feeling all that we're feeling, you know, I'm, I'm such a, I'm so in alignment with what Amanda shared that we don't, we're not inviting the fear to take over us. But if we don't acknowledge what we're feeling, it has so much more power. And it can be like, you know, I always like to use the analogy of like the monster in the closet. We think there's a monster in the closet. The children are terrified. There's a monster in the closet. And then you open the door and it's, there's nothing there, right? And it's until it's, the door is open and we acknowledge what we're feeling and let it be and realize that what you're feeling and what you're experiencing individually is also deeply connected to a collective feeling. And it's not only your own. So how do we root into our own feelings and root into our own center and chant that song that we heard at the beginning of this circle, let me be in inner peace from my center to the center of me, right? And stay connected to our own center, acknowledging that when you start to feel a lot of emotion or energy or fear, you know, I've, I, I'm in my clients and so many people I'm working with, 
people are having full on panic attacks right now because they're feeling the energy of the whole planet, not just your own circumstances. And so acknowledging that, that what you're feeling is your, is your own feelings. And it's also connected to, we, we are so connected. We are so interconnected on this planet. We are, we are one consciousness as well as our own individual experiences. Now that sets us up for a lot of joy and pleasure and also can set us up to feel a lot of fear when the world is panicking, right? So acknowledging that your fear and what you're sensing is your own experience and it is also uh, connected to the collective. And the beautiful side of that is the more we also inspire hope and connection and community, we collectively feel that too. And so let today be a part of that essence that's being spread on the planet right now. So many people coming together virtually to love and support one another, to share, share our, our fears, our concerns, as well as the light and the hope that's possible in times like this. And I just want to read you a couple of lines of something that I've shared in a lot of my courses and circles because it's so pertinent to our times and, and so incredibly pertinent to today right now. And it's from Dr. Clarissa Pincola Estes, who wrote the piece, We Were Made for These Times. And when we send out the email follow-up for this, I'll make sure that I put a link to this full reading for you. So just a little piece of this is that she says, my friends, do not lose heart. We were made for these times. We were made for these times, okay? We are needed and that is all we can know. Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world of once, at once, but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that is within our reach. Any small, calm thing one soul can do to help another soul, that is enough, okay? That is enough. So holding on to that idea that we were made for these times, this community of women, this rising feminine heart on the planet right now has been preparing and training and doing yoga and meditating and preparing for this exact scenario and moment Though we didn't expect it or even see it coming out of left field. We are prepared. We are prepared and we can do this and the inner work and the honoring and acknowledging of our feelings and how we're experiencing it is such a big part of it. So with that said, and with your journal and with your pen, I wanna invite you to use a little metaphor right now. While we're in the spring equinox, what we're gonna kinda of do here is we're gonna blend a little bit of our winter solstice and spring equinox tradition, because let's face it, we're, we're in a very strange blend of the two of them right now. And I wanna invite you to, I'm gonna use a garden analogy today because I, my family and I are really gearing up to have uh, gardening be our number one focus right now and growing our own food. It's a very good time for that. And so uh, I'm sure you're aware of what a compost pile is, right? What a compost is. Compost is where we put um, old food or, or dry leaves or anything that would be considered waste in a lot of places and we turn it into we turn it into gold really and fertilizer and something that is able to fertilize our garden to be able to grow and, and tend to um, the nutrients and grow vegetables and fruits and flowers. So it's the compost, this, this breaking down of materials that would otherwise be you know, tossed away, that it turns into something really beautiful and magical for the garden that you're growing. And so what I would like to invite us to do is to first take a moment to acknowledge exactly what you've been feeling, to place a hand on your heart like you did in the beginning of our meditation today, to place a hand on your heart and giving yourself just full permission to say, I am feeling, I have been feeling, my body has been feeling. And to take a moment to maybe roll your shoulders. And as you're acknowledging what you're feeling, let your body do a little bit of moving that's gonna allow you to move some of that energy, right? And not to assume that everyone is in stress or everyone is feeling fear, but whatever you're feeling, I've been feeling joy. I've been feeling opportunity, possibility. I've been feeling anxious, okay? Just noticing what you're feeling and, and first acknowledging that. And if you wanna write that down, you can. If you wanna write those words down, you can. And if there's anything that's been feeling uh, debilitating or challenging for you, then just taking a moment to acknowledge that. 
to acknowledge what has been real for you and that that be permission and okay. Because when we do that, when we just hold that, you know, hold ourselves with this compassionate, loving, unconditional energy, um, we're allowed to move through it versus just stay stuck in it. So allow, imagine this vortex right now that uh, Amanda and I are holding and that the other hundreds of women that are around the planet right now are holding for you, okay? Gutted, I see, sad, anxious, worried, isolated. Positive energy and loving thoughts, okay? So this is some of the words that are coming through. And you're welcome to put this, put any words you want into the chat box. Possibility is what another person is saying. Healing, uncertainty. Please keep them coming. Alone. Fearful. Opportunity, productive, surprised, enslaved, interconnectedness, fatigued, sad yet grateful and abundant, positive possibilities for a new world dynamic, inadequacy, interruption of my life, peace, trying to be optimistic, peaceful and centered, aligned, uncertain, expansive, all the full spectrum women the full spectrum, my sisters, like it is allowed because this, there has never been an experience like this that we have ever gone through before together, right? So the full spectrum, but just letting, letting those words come to you of what you've been feeling. And what I noticed in myself is that just like the words that are coming through here, it's the full spectrum, right? It's the full spectrum. And that can be confusing sometimes. Like, wait a second, maybe I'm supposed to be scared. Should I be hopeful? Should I be joyful? Should I be terrified? It's all of it. We feel it all in these times in unprecedented times where there's nothing to compare it to. Inspired, scared, sad, hopeful, awakened. Old patterns are being obliterated and new patterns are being formed. That's what someone said, deep sadness, volcanic pulsing, brewing in my heart. Guilty for traveling, okay? Feeling guilty, right? Has anyone felt guilty throughout this process? Positive changed. Stuck and yet moving forward. Connectedness. I want to feel less afraid. Looking forward to the positive and the calm after the storm. Fear, anxiety, peace, calm, confusion, hope. The full spectrum. Here we are. So just let's imagine that we're putting all of these words into our beautiful compost pile okay we've got now i know from trying to master compost <laughs> it is not easy for me because i'm just learning i know some of you are probably very good at this okay but compost is filled with all sorts of stuff yucky stuff beautiful stuff fresh fruit you know old rotting things it all comes together and it makes gold it makes fertilizer it's magical, like it's, they call it black gold when it finally breaks down and nature is allowed to just do its work and decompose and use the heat, the natural heat that gets created. It's all a natural process. And we're gonna throw in uh, push to my ex pushed to my limits. We're gonna throw in trust and deep compassion. We're gonna throw in space for more interconnectedness. We're gonna throw in fear. We're gonna throw in feeling isolated. We're gonna throw into the compost, all of it, and just watch it move into this pile of this process that Mother Earth, that nature is going to take over. And imagine your own feelings being held there and being useful, right? Every single component of it is useful. Curious, surrendered. All these energies together okay are going into our compost pile and let's just take a moment to imagine what decomposing is going to happen and, and i really want to decipher that from being thrown away because that's a very different energy i'm not getting rid of my fear i am putting it into the compost to allow it to be transmuted into something beautiful okay i'm not getting rid of parts of myself and saying that shouldn't be allowed and in a time where we're in more isolation you're gonna see parts of yourself that you may think, I wanna get rid of this part. I don't like this part. I'm not happy with this part. Okay, I'm gonna invite you to, to allow that to be 
transmuted also. That idea of I'm going to slice this away and get rid of it into how can I compost this into something, into something beautiful, right? Not getting rid of any part of yourself, but allowing it to be, expand, compost, decompose into this fertilizer that we are collectively honing in on and honoring so that we can sprinkle all over this planet right now because it is so needed, right? It is so needed. So as this decomposition happens and the, the transformation and, and transmutation, which we don't know what it's gonna look like, we don't know what it's all gonna look like, but what we do know is the intentions and the desires that we are having here. And that's what the spring equinox honors. It's the spring equinox honors that rebirth and that, that looking ahead to what's possible. And I wanna invite you to, now that you've acknowledged what you've been feeling, to then think about as you're planting your garden and your seeds and they're starting to blossom and flourish and we can bring that compost over to actually nourish the soil for that to be possible. What are the intentions and visions and rebirth that you are holding as possible in this time? Some of it might seem impossible right now, and that's what a leader does. That's what a visionary does. And I'm going to invite all of you on this call to step into being a visionary with me right now. Because you can do it. We can do it. No matter where you are on the spectrum, I'm going to invite you to actually hold that vision in yourself for what you see as possible. I see us uniting with love and compassion. I see Okay, I'm seeing some words coming through. What are the intentions of what you want to plant in that soil and fertilize with our compost and bring all of what we've been holding and feeling inside of ourselves? Okay, and any words that you want to plant here, that you want to put here, love, living harmoniously. Love, 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 okay? Generatively with our planet Earth thriving. Understanding the strength of the lion's roar, yes. Light of hope in the world, compassion for all, kindness, greater service. I'm gonna throw in more interconnectedness than we've actually ever seen before. <laughs> more compassion for each other than we've ever seen before. Greater service, unity shining our light to everyone in this situation. There's never been something that's so universally affected all of us, right? Curiosity, living in balance with Mother Earth, transformation for the planet, awakening. Thank you, sisters. Keep them coming and keep your vision strong. Keep your hope strong. That's what we are drawing right now from Mother Nature, from the Earth, is her promise of hope. Faith and trust, serving the people, learning to, leaning into aloneness, simplicity, generosity, understanding, honoring the oneness of the world, visibility to serve, vitality, global community. There's so many coming through, I can't read them all, I love this. <laughs> and all of these, global peace, forgiveness, rise of the divine feminine. Yes, we have been preparing to be here at this time right now truth, integrity, aligned with loving kindness, patience. More gratitude for what we take for granted, ascension, awareness, transcendence, compassion, awareness, allowing and loving, and so much more. I'm sure we could be here for hours sharing this so thank you, thank you, thank you for putting your words here, new growth, expanding roots, expanding blossoms. And I want you to imagine closing your eyes for a moment. And if you haven't already written down some of these words for yourself, then let this be a journaling exercise you can do once we complete. But that you actually see all of these seeds that we're planting collectively for our planet and we're fertilizing it with what we're actually feeling with the anger and the fear and all of these emotions that are valid and worthy and deserve to be felt and expressed. And they're going into the compost, they're fertilizing this beautiful garden and all the seeds that we've just planted, this hope for the spring, 
and we're seeing them grow and blossom and flourish and seeing a world that will rise, that will be reborn from a time of winter, from a time of loss and tragedy where many are suffering. Let's imagine to collectively that we are sending some of this energy to all those who are suffering, including yourself, especially start with yourself and expand that prayer and hope to people everywhere. Let them be a part of this garden that we're planting. We plant it for ourselves, in our own family, our own four walls, and let it expand far beyond to all those in the world. And may we see going up the chain from every single individual who might be experiencing fear or worry or concern about their well-being, about whether they're going to be able to make their payments and rent and all of these very real concerns that people have on the planet. And let's see that person right above them who receives the payment also having compassion and the person above them having compassion and the person above them having compassion so that every link in the chain has understanding for those below them and for each circumstance. May there be compassion and understanding in every step of this process and something that is so universally felt right now. So thank you all for that, taking the time to do this exercise with me. And I want to invite you to keep going with it and come back to it anytime you need to, anytime you feel what you're feeling to take some time to allow yourself to feel it. I'm going to offer, and when Amanda goes into some practices, I'm actually going to offer in our, um, emotional practices, a suggestion. And so I'll get to that when we get to that part of, of suggested practices and, uh, and join with me in, in planting the seeds of your vision for what's possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all. Sending you waterfalls of love and peace and trust. And we're gonna move on to a, a more practical section here of what are, some, what are some practices that we can bring into play right now in the energy of the spring equinox. And Amanda, I'm gonna. Mm, yeah. Thank you, Laura Love, that was so beautiful. And thank you to just all these amazing, amazing, amazing women, goddesses, priestesses that are here together. Like if, if there's ever a time that we've been called to walk our path is now like, to rise up and we we've all been preparing for a long 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 time actually probably lifetimes but as all, I know all of you beloveds on this call especially in this lifetime so I really did want to go over <clears throat> Laura myself wanted to offer some really practical like <clears throat> We hope that you will be able to listen to this again, this recording and enjoy the meditation and these, these words of all your sisters coming through. And then also just, you know, really practical things that we can bring into our life at this time, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And, you know, we might have these little different compartments, physical, mental, but I mean, they're all interconnected, but I'd like to start address really the physical, but this is emotional, mental, and spiritual all at one. So depending where in the world you are and, and what life looks like right now for all of us, right? It's like, wow, we're all in this together. You know, um, I've been going through a number of my own kind of dark night of the soul, my own Samhain, um winter solstice this year. And then, and now it's like, wow, we're all in this path together. And I think one of the most important questions that you can ask yourself because I know like if, if you're in a place where you're needing to stay in and, and feeling a little lonely or isolated or, or whatever it is, you know, you're home and the kids are at home and there's a lot of overwhelm, whatever is going on in your life at the moment, you have to be able to ask yourself, what is it that I need at this time? What do I need, you know? And to really be able to listen to yourself. Like, and if you notice anxiety come up, and it's, it's taking over and it's like, how can I be more ca compassionate with myself? Like, what is it I actually need in this moment? So it could be as simple as a bath, right? So let's say you're able usually to do X, Y, and Z, go to yoga studios, a spa, whatever. That needs to be created in your own home right now. And, and what a beautiful opportunity in some ways. Like, 
run the bath. We're so blessed to have water. If you've got some bath salts put in there, if you've got some essential oils to put in there, like create your own spa, light your own candles, you know, like what does I need at this time? Because there's a lot coming up for everybody. And so when we really ask ourselves those questions, is it that I need to be able to express what I'm feeling emotionally or mentally? What is it I really need? Because, you know, rather than turning to some numbing things that we could be like, whether it's overeating, alcohol, drugs, you know, shopping online, because that can still happen, you know, whatever the, those things are, it's like, actually, what is it I really need at this moment? And is it maybe just to feel what I need to feel? And like we said, if we resist something, it persists and it can take over and it impact, it is disempowering. So when we just go, this is what I'm, I'm scared of. This is my worst fear here. It's gone. It's released. And like Laura said, you know, the closet door is opened and the monster isn't in there. But I think sometimes to be, to admit our biggest fear around something disempowers it and it in return empowers us. And it's really about accepting all parts of ourselves. Like, you know, whether it's the guilt, fear, shame, pain, lack of forgiveness, anger, whatever it is, like allowing every emotion to have its voice, you know? And so this is where journaling comes in. This is where writing the unsent letters comes in, you know, whatever it is you need to do to find your own inner peace is really, really vital. So for me, and, and I'm very blessed where I live in the world, it's nature. It's nature all the way and um you know usually every day i try to get myself out in the forest or the beach or the mountains um and now it's just like well the you know myself and the kids are and i can go to a place in nature where there isn't anybody but where can you go to to connect with nature and allow nature to be your healer allow it to be i mean it's the way I live life is, you know, the Celtic wheel. Every six weeks we look to nature and what is nature teaching us? What is nature inviting us to do? So, you know, depending on where you are in the world, and most of us here are, are moving into our, our spring equinox, right? So, you know, it's still depending where you are in the world, there could be still snow, it could be still cold. So there is a little bit of that winter solstice and we can be in summer having our own winter solstice, right? And all of us are really in this winter solstice. We're being asked to reflect, to go inwards, to, to allow whatever needs to heal because whatever it is that's going on collectively, you know, it's been magnified. It's that mirror outside of us. So what is it in within us that's asking to be healed? And we'll get these answers through journaling, through our writing, through our creativity, through our art, through allowing ourselves to feel. And if you can get yourself out in nature, have a look at what is blossoming right now. You know, are the nettles coming up, the nettles that nourish us and, and the nettles that teach us oh so beautifully about creating boundaries. Metals, nettles are some of the most magnificent heal, like healing, like it cleanses our blood, our kidneys, everything. And yet they have little spikes all over them and they're just like, I'm a powerful healer and I have really clear boundaries and perhaps this is a time where you know you need to speak your truths more you need to be really clear on your boundaries and allowing nature to be the healer so if you can get out and uh, if you've got trees around you that you can go to like there's such a beautiful um ancient practice called tree whispering over here and you can just go to the tree and fill it with love and, and give it gratitude and also tell it your worries, tell it your concerns. And as we know with the trees, they go straight down into the earth, right? So they, and then it's up into the light. So they don't hold the energy. You don't have to worry about the tree taking in that energy. It just moves straight through the tree. So you can tell the tree your concerns. You can, whatever the anxiety, just let, let it go, whisper it into the tree, speak it into the tree, put you hug, wrap your body, your arms around the tree, allow your chakra system to align with the tree and then turn around, sit up against the tree, sit with the tree, feel the roots of the tree and your roots going deep into the earth. Like allow yourself to be completely at one with nature. Like um, there's this other beautiful ancient technique in Ireland uh, called wailing and it's not so much chanting or singing but just whatever sounds need to come out and you can do this in nature you can do this in your own home depending you know what your life looks like now make space for this you know and you know 
if you're concerned, like, oh, I'm not eating as well as I'd like to be. And, um, you know, I'm worried about, you know, just even if it feels like it's not important, but it is important, like putting on weight and not being able to exercise. So it's like, how can you kind of recreate for yourself right now? You know, um, I tried to get up before the kids and, and um, you know, do a little bit of yoga or can do yoga with them if your kids are at home. Um, you know, you can find things on the internet now that you can dance with or do your own, like just turn off the lights or open the you know, the windows and dance inside, outside, you know, f find whatever it is that you need physically, emotionally, or mentally. Like music is powerful for raising your vibration, dancing, just moving our body. It helps us not get stuck, right? So put on the music, just start to dance around, you know? Um, I love what Laura is talking about with your garden. Like if you've got a garden, I mean, it's a spring equinox, plant a little plant, you know, plant a vegetable garden, start to compost, get your hands in the soil. Any of this um, connection with nature is going to be healing. And in some ways that primal instinct that is being attacked on some levels right now, like, will I have enough food? You know, what's going to happen in the world? Like, you know, that, that really feels like it allows us to feel more safe. Like I'm creating food for myself. Like I'm living closer to the earth, more in harmony with the earth. You know, even for me, a lot of the time I just say, what is it I really need right now? And sometimes, and this is really Irish what I'm going to come out with, but it's just a cup of tea, you know, and, um, you know, whether it's a chamomile or a tranquility tea or just something that's really soothing, maybe you have a rescue remedy, your essential oils, like, pull out the tools, whatever it is that you need. And then, you know, of course, meditation, you know, it's so easy to meditate and do yoga when all is well in the world. But now is the time that you're really being called upon to use your spiritual tools. All those wonderful tools you got in your tool belt, they aren't just there for the fun of it, like you have been preparing for now. So make the time for the meditation. You know, if, if you're like, well, the kids are at home or whatever's happening with work or not happening in those areas, make the time because you know after you do it, even if it's just five minutes, how much better you feel. You know, it's like stress and anxiety gets stuck in the spine and we start to feel stiff. So even if you just get down on the floor and do cat to cow and move or just feel into your body, what kind of movement does it want? Like, honor that. Um, when it comes to emotions, we've been chatting about that, but like, again, you put your hand in your heart, like, what do I need right now? And then it's like, what does my inner child need right now? Like, like telling her that she needs to feel safe. Maybe you have a picture of yourself, whatever age you really tune into, it could be your present self, it could be your five-year-old, your, your 20-year-old, like that really needs to feel safe, you know? So um, emotionally, like, have a circle like we're on right now a friend that you can call like don't allow yourself to feel lonely alone like and the other thing when it comes to our emotions our well-being our mental like be mindful with the amount of social media or media in general because you know we all know that there's so much happening out there right now and there's a lot of contradictory information so i think it's really important to be well informed and i think at the same time you don't want to get caught up on like you know that comp you need to know okay these are a b and c d that i need to know right now and you know this is actually where i could offer my support but not getting caught up um because again that can really lead to a lot a lot of anxiety and then last of all you know when it comes to mental well-being and everything i just want to ask you is there any unnecessary pressures that you're putting on yourself right now? Things that you could just let go of, like <laughs> to be completely transparent, you know, I'm mom here. I've got two kids at home, you know, um, running a business and it's all yes, bliss, but it's all a lot. So, you know, I always look at that pie chart and there's like, you know, family and you know, uh, work and you know, which, which all are really joy anyway, for me um, and then there's like housework and you know what my house is a bit of a mess right now and you know I'm the feng shui lady right so it's like well you know I'll look after that in a couple of days that is not on my scale of importance I don't care if there's a huge big pile of laundry and I look at it and I kind of laugh at it you know or maybe 
you know, you raise your voice or you wish you hadn't, um, you know, or, or whatever that is. It's like, where do you need to give yourself more compassion? What, what pressures are you putting on yourself that you can just go, forget it. Like, I, I don't need to be worrying about it. I'm going to like take that off my plate or, you know, what support do you need at this time? Whether it's, you know, there's a counselor, a therapist, reach out to a sister, you know, a coach, um, but making sure that you have the emotional and mental support that you need right now. That is really, really important. And, you know, it's about being vulnerable and being, being really, truly vulnerable. And, that is such a, a sign of power and, and it really is a, a vital part of your work as a goddess, as a priestess, to be like, this is what I need right now and this is where I'm at, you know, and, you know, connecting with somebody or your sisters on a heart level and when you show up that authentic, it gives them permission to do the same. So I, I really hope there's some practical um things that you can get from our time together here today that you can just bring into your day-to-day -day life to bring as much peace, inner peace, because as we know, it starts in here, the inner peace, then that radiates out into our family, out into our home, out into our villages, out into the country, out into the world. And that's what's needed right now. So love you all so, so much. And I'm so, so grateful um, for being here together. So beautiful, Laura, I'm, I'm going to come over to you, back to you here now. Thank you. Those are all amazing practical tools. And I'm just going to expand on one of them because I feel like, you know, when I spoke specifically to trusting your feelings and letting them come up to be able to have a way to express and honor them uh, is really everything, you know. What, <laughs> I don't know if anybody has an opportunity to watch much of the um, Mr. Rogers stuff that's come out lately, his documentary, right, and then the Tom Hanks movie where he portrays him. And, and you know, what was so magical about, um, about Mr. Rogers was that he educated children on how to heal, how to feel their feelings and how to name them and how to be okay with them. And if you really need any inner child love and support over these next couple of months, I highly recommend you go watch Mr. Rogers. <laughs> That's one practical tool I'm going to offer. It's, it really speaks right to the safety of an inner child's feelings, right? Like that, that your feelings are valid and sometimes they're really hard and sometimes they're really crazy and sometimes you may not feel like you're allowed to have those. And Mr. Rogers was a genius at helping children know that it's okay to bang on a piano. It's okay to hit a pillow. Like he gave children these highly um, sophisticated tools at a very young age to know. And, and he also spoke to world catastrophes and global issues as they were happening. And so Mr. Rogers was a genius and I encourage you to check him out. Um, if you have a chance and how wonderful he did, how, what a wonderful job he did at helping to tend to your inner child and to feel your feelings. And with that, you know, I'll tell you my family, we're all big feelers. We're all very sensitive. We all are very loud. <laughs> well, okay. They're loud. I'm not so loud, but they're very loud. <laughs> my husband, my children, we are big feelers and you know, that's not wrong. That's okay. We're all very sensitive. My children have been cooped up. You know, San Diego is a beautiful place, but it has been raining a lot right when quarantine, when we decided to start self-quarantining. All of us trapped in a house. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. And we, our family practices something called a feeling room. We have a room that we allow ourselves, myself, my husband, my children to go if we are feeling like I need to go take care of myself right now. I need to go tend to myself right now. And we have pillows in there. We have a bat. We have cushions. We have loud music, we have tissues in case we need to cry, we have everything. And it's a place where we can just feel what we're feeling. We'll put on music, we'll dance, we'll put on a song that might make you cry, move your body, hit a pillow, wailing. I love that, Amanda, because wailing is a way to move energy. And if you don't know what wailing is, just, just go for it, just try it, anything. A sound that wants to come out of your body. That's energy in your body. I love that analogy I heard that emotion is energy in motion. Emotion is energy in motion. But what we usually do is we trap it inside. We stick it in there, we shove it down, we don't let it out, and it just needs to move. 
the fear, the overwhelm, all of it just needs to move. Excuse me for just one second. Hi, loveys. I, I, oh, she's back. Hi, love. Speaking <laughs> of, I was hearing screaming children in the back. Yeah. I was about to say, I'm, I'm, I'll pop back in here. I know, I understand. <laughs> so we're going, we're going to wrap this up in just a minute. So um, just having a place where it's okay to feel your feelings. It can be your bathroom, honestly. And a pillow is the most wonderful tool because you can't hear. You scream into a pillow, no one can hear you. It doesn't matter if you live in an apartment or you're in a car, no one can hear you. You can scream into a pillow, move the energy, move the fear, wail, cry, take care of yourself. Your feelings are valid, they're worthy, and they deserve to move. It's energy and motion. And on the other side of that is so much more freedom and spaciousness to feel the authentic peace, to feel the authentic hope, right? Not just jumping to that, right? Bypassing the, the feelings that we feel. And so, I'm just gonna encourage you over the next, we don't know how long this is gonna last. This may be a few weeks, this may be a couple of months, we don't know, but your mental, emotional, spiritual health is of vital importance through this and staying connected to yourself, to your own feelings, letting them move and having a place in your space that it could be a corner, that that's my feeling space, right? That's where I get to go and feel my feelings. And you'll know when they come up because it'll be intense, you might snap at somebody, you might yell at your kids. I did that yesterday, was not proud of myself. I had a big yell and I said, oh boy, okay, yep, I gotta go to my feeling space. And I went and yelled at a pillow and I got some energy out and I came back to my kids with more space for them, right? I had the space to actually deal with what they were feeling because children are little mirrors. They're little mirrors that reflect everything we're feeling and they also are little sponges that feel the energy of the world. Like they can feel what's going on right now. They can hear the conversations. They can hear the news in the background. They can feel collectively what's happening. And they're probably bouncing off the walls. <laughs> At least mine were. So I just want to acknowledge that, that we can actually give children also these same tools. They're not too young, as Mr. Rogers taught, to go bang on a piano or hit a pillow. And we can do the same thing for ourselves and for them so that we can really move through to this authentic hope and trust. and. Um, and really know how to actually feel that part, the, the planting the seeds and inspiring the hope, like to be there authentically and to, to allow yourself to clear and move anything that gets in the way of that. That's our, that's our priestessing job right now as goddesses on the planet is to compost and transmute anything which is not serving that hope that we can hold for ourselves and for the world. Okay, so Go get yourself a pillow, uh, a bat if you have one, um, a journal, all those things that Amanda recommended and really honoring those feelings that are there so we can hold the faith, keep the faith, keep the trust. So um, I'm gonna bring us into closing. And Amanda, is there anything else that you wanted to add before I go into closing? I, I think that was beautiful, just closing our sacred space and I just, I just want to give deep, deep gratitude for, for you, Laura, and all these beautiful, magnificent women, goddesses, priestesses that are here together today. And, and I'm so grateful. And Laura and I plan to hold um, regular circles here for this time, space for all of us. And we'll be announcing um, more about that. We'll send it out in our newsletters, right? Yes, we are. This is something that, you know, they're going to be imperfect. We may have screaming children in the background. My kids might be right here next to me during some of these circles because that's what is right now. But we, we want to do this and we want to provide this space to come together and um, to support each other. And thank you, Amanda, so much for your, your beautiful light and love. And it's such an honor to do this together with you. And to all of the women who joined us, I'm going to invite us all to close our eyes for a moment and to really visualize these seeds of intentions that we have all set, these beautiful words that hundreds of you put into the chat box. So a hundred, hundred messages came through when I asked, you know, and the same thing when I asked, 
what are you feeling? You were all so vulnerable and real and told the truth. And I want you to just take a moment to put your hand on your heart and acknowledge how beautiful that is and how that can be really hard sometimes. And it can even be discouraged sometimes. But I want to honor you and acknowledge you for the realness, for what you expressed, and for the incredible vision that you also held, even in the midst of this time that can be very challenging. I want to acknowledge your vision. I want to acknowledge your hope and your trust and your deep faith that underneath it all, that reservoir that Amanda spoke of, that we can all tap into in the season of hope. And let's imagine that as those blossoms start to come up from our garden, right, that are filled, the garden filled with nourishing food and fruits and vegetables and beautiful flowers that we can pick and bring into our home space, right? All of the nourishment that we are growing that's fertilized through all that we feel, that all that we are, all that we experience, all that compost that's just nourished our garden and that we are sending that same energy and love all over the planet right now and sending compassion and rest to the nervous systems of ourselves and to those who need it most, health and vitality to those who need it most, sending peace and hope and trust and a tremendous amount of gratitude to all of the medical care professionals in the world right now who are handling the overwhelm that they're experiencing in some hospitals and medical facilities. We're gonna send hope and faith and trust to our political system to be able to handle this in the most conscious way possible and actually envision and seeing them being able to do that, whether you believe it's possible or not. Remember, visionaries hold the impossible as possible. So let's hold the possibility that this incredible transformation on the planet is possible through this, through the, through this crisis, through this challenge, and that we see each person acting in their highest possible self. We see each landlord, each banker, we see each business, we see all through the whole cycle and chain of people on this planet acting from a place of compassion, from love, from trust, and from a sense that we are in this together. And I invite you to add in any other prayers or words of intention that you'd like to right now while we're in this very powerful vortex of healing and hope and peace. Add your own words of intention and we'll take just a moment of silence for that. Thank you, sisters. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the energy you brought here. I can feel all of you, I can sense you, we can feel you. We believe in you. We know that you are ready and you have been in training for this exact moment in time. We all are. We just have to keep reminding each other of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so beautiful. And shall we just close with a couple more rounds of our chant? So sure. um, we're going to just, we'll just close with the chant that we opened with. So just close your eyes and bring your hands to your heart. Remember, it's not about the sound of your voice. It's just the energy. So please let me feel in the peace in my center in my center of me please let me feel in the peace in my center in my center of me please let me feel in the peace, in my center, in my center of me. I'm just going to invite everyone to take one last deep inhale. And we're going to exhale with EMAS, which is divine inspiration in, in Gaelic. So taking a deep inhale. E Thank you, beloveds. Thank you all. And uh, these words are so beautiful, Laura, that uh, all the messages coming up here. So Laura and I will be in touch about our, our next date um, for us all to be together. Sending infinite love to everybody and support and 
and just just deep deep peace mm. and trust love lots of love mm. thank you everybody you're thank so you. welcome you're so welcome you're so welcome mm. love you. you love you bye, bye.